Hello, everyone. It's uh, it's time. Uh, so for those of y'all that didn't know, uh, because most of y'all pr probably didn't know, um, way, way, way back when, uh, like back in tw like 2017, it had to be right. Uh, I streamed to Twitch for the very first time. Uh, I I'm I'm not calling this like you know, it's, it's like. I can't celebrate an anniversary of that because it it's like I wasn't streaming regularly. I started streaming regularly like last October. But um, yeah, this was the very first thing I ever streamed on Twitch uh, to a bunch of friends. It was uh, it was a good time. Uh, OK, yeah. So this game is not suitable for children. Those who are easily disturbed. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a positive experience playing this game. That's very fucking true. Like. Pay heed to this fucking warning. Uh, no, I will not be reviewing the content, but, um... You know, it does contain spoilers, but, uh... <laughs> yes, yeah, Shia. By delaying DDLC, you agree that you have noted the game's age rating in your region. You consent to exposure of highly disturbing content. Yes. Alright. We good. <laughs> Happy Dokiversary. God. Oh wow, that's loud. Hang on. Turn that down a little bit. Eh, it's a bit better. Bring the sound down as well. Alright. Uh, Language, yep. Turn the text speed up a bit. I'm a fast reader. Alright. Um. I guess we just go new game. We're back at it. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better running off away. Feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Uh, what? You say like you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Alistair. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Sh Shia. Shia. I might know what happens, but shh. Not everyone here might know. Somebody just shh. <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> but you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in, in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Alistair, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I'm too cool for clubs, Sayori. I'm gonna I'm gonna join the track team. Or uh, you know, uh what 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 else are like uh what other sports are there? I mean, I was on the swim team in high school. God, I haven't swam in like a long goddamn time. I was talking about how worried, how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of... I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years just because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. 
I'll look at a few clubs if it'll make you happy. No promises, though. At least promise you'll, you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. God, I, I, I didn't remember, I, I forgot how much of a fucking, like, asshole we kind of are at the start of this game, man. It's like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go to a club. I don't want to, I don't want to do after school shit. I don't want to go home and play video game. No, no after school, no skill. Become neat. Clubs. Zero so wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. Look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Actually, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... You know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. <clears throat> That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday that I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Eh. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. Ah. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. <laughs> Glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Alistair! What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls! Wow! What are you looking at? You want to say something, say it. Uh, uh sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first-year student. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yori, the smartest in the club. It, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. It sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Alistair. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. <laughs> Smooth. Come sit down. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, while Natsuki, Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the cl closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! 
Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Sorry and take one. I, I do I do like I do appreciate that she has she has a little bang. Because as you can see, I I also, I too. Hang on, I could select my source. You can see. I too have a fang. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, okay. Kitsumari, to be fair, to be fair, I have played this before. I'm revisiting DDLC because there's the new, like, uh, plus version with uh, some extra content in it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I know what's coming. <laughs> I turn the cupcake around my fingers looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. But why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? I made them for you or anything. Yeah, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Because we all, we all love a nice tsundere, don't we? You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, a hot cup of tea... Doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> don't let you... Self get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, I, I, that's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Uh, I was afraid of this question tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. I'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As, pre as president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided, decided to start your own club? You'd probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader at the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around ma around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. People aren't interested in reading, they're illiterate. Yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, I can't read either, so. I, I'm just kind of like winging it. I'm, I'm, I'm improvising. I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> Do our best. You know it. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's doing the thing and they're all going to try and uh, make the club happen. So Alistair, what kinds of things do you like to read? Uh, well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good answer, a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. 
Favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of on Yuri's side here. Like, fantasy is uh, definitely one of my favorite genres, and I really like worlds that, um, you know, have interesting things going on, like, you, you know, unique spins on the fantasy genre. It's hard, it's hard to find, like, good books like that, though. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. Uh, yes, I, I read I read one Goosebumps in elementary school. <laughs> really, I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. If someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Yuri says as she stares directly into the camera. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? Left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud! Give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Yuri sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, how about... Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh? Uh, well, I guess, sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. You have any experience? You have writing experience too, Yuri. If you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Yeah, let's do it. Sometimes you say Yuri out loud, keeps throwing. Oh yeah, that <laughs> yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Shy also goes by Yuri in some circles. <laughs> Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it'll help us all get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Alistair? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Suri may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and... Um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I, I thought... Hmm. Alistair. I, I, you, you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. Am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? It is if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Uh, right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! Siri wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. 
Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Alistair, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can I really impress class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? Well, hang on. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Alistair, since we're already done here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for the clubs. Sure, might as well. And we make our way home. My mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. <laughs> it's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Hmm, yes. All right, so, um... Right. Who do I? Who the fuck do I want to go for first? Uh, we'll s like, it's like if you want like the the good good ending, you have to like uh go and like get all of the events with all of them. Um, I don't know. Uh, do I care enough to do all of them in one sitting? Do I care that much? Like you, you get you get a happier ending if you uh, do all of them, or you, you get like a little like uh, a little like hey thanks for uh, d doing that, uh, good job. Um, right, I'm gonna just go with Yuri. Fuck it. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Unrequited makes Sayori happy. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> All right, hang on, wait a minute. You, there's, uh, ah, fuck it. Who cares? I was gonna try and go for a perfect one, but who gives a shit? Termination. Uh, melancholy. You just take the the big words. Effulgent. If you don't know what the, a word means, you just pick that, and it goes to Yuri. Uh, graveyard short. Disarray. Uh. Uncontrollable. I don't know. <laughs> Whenever I pick a word that means something bad and Sayori starts jumping, it it, it hurts me. Uh <laughs> Who's gonna jump up? You think it's gonna be Yuri or Sayori? Sure was Sayori! That made her happy? Ah, I thought well, Yuri was just talking about how she likes fantasy. Hang on. Infallible. Uh, actor image. Just like any like sort of pretentious word and it goes to like Yuri. Should I not capture my cursor? Uh, I guess my cursor's fine. Hi again, Alistair. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I, but I, at, least, I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. It's the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Siori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Alistair always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with my busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room, how dependable. 
Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. You almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Alistair can become good friends too. Um, Sayori. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Uh, wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Jeremy made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I wouldn't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. We could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Ugh. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. That doesn't seem to be the case. Siori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. At the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Uh, sorry. I was just spacing out. Uttering this, I'm sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Oh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very g engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Mmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is entitled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. While her life is in danger, she desperately... She needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? It made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So th that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. You're not a fan of that sort of thing, Alistair. Uh, no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Just that those kinds of stories... They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. And horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, what, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? I mean, she's right. Those are the, like, the best sorts of villains. The ones with, like, real motives. And, like, aspirations. Like, the ones that, uh, sometimes, uh, are doing, uh, argu arguably have better motives than the, uh, protagonists. You know? I love those kinds of villains. So, one of the reasons I, uh, you know, 
Um, one of the reasons I... What was I thinking of? Persona 5 Royal. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I love Persona 5 Royal so much, because the, uh, the extra villain they throw in at the end is, like, really good in that sense. It's like, oh, wow. May maybe, maybe we should just stop. I mean, the villain's actually not doing that bad of a thing. That's, well, that's true. In fact, might as well get started reading it, right? It, you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. Quickly retrieve the book I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not like I don't want you to. Just that I'm not very used to... That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. As if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Uh, sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the book, the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. See if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? Uh, to turn the page. Uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Uh, yeah. Thanks. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I remember this bit here. Yeah, y Yuri was also the, the, the one I chose for, like, my, my first route in the original, too, so... Um, yeah, I, 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 you'll have to excuse me if I kind of, like, skip through some of this stuff, or if I'm just, like, I'm, I'm, like, leaving the text on screen long enough for people to read it, but since I already kind of know what happens, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of, like, let it roll a little bit here and there. Uh, the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Do you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. She also second guesses all of the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. They're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Alistair, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Uh, wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh... What are you saying? I... Okay, everyone! I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. Might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh... Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is it alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. Stand up, make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Uh, yeah. 
My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I'd never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Siri and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Siri's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who will we show to first? Show it to Yuri, obviously. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. Yuri reads the poem. I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, uh what was that? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, then ends up covering her whole face. Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. At that's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the reason I was able to tell. Just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. The most no noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that the, both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Mind if I read your poem now? Uh... Yeah. Right, right, right. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is very pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. This is our first time sharing. I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Alistair. Really? So totally missed the point. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the DMC is stupid as hell in this game. I, I, dude's got rocks in his skull. Uh, they usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is the only is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her past, remaining in a place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Uh, it's nothing, really. Yours is impressive, too, so... Nah. Anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know... I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Alistair. Uh, me too. 
All right, well, let's get Natsuki out of the way because she's going to be real upset that we wrote something for Yuri. Alistair, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. Uh, what? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? You think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put an effort. It all starts somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. i tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Uh, eagles can fly. <laughs> I love the Natsuki version of the theme song. <laughs> Uh, it's just kind of slightly off key, and I love that. Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. Isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yeah, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end and then made it fall flat on purpose. Helps bring out the feeling of the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, uh, I guess not. I, sa I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki feeling prou is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Hi, Alistair. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Alistair. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? That's the sort of barrier we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Alistair. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone expect everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who, uses, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write that effectively with allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I've never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It'll take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't always mean I feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. 
see the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. It's too late. My retinas have already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh... Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. There's a hole here once. It's gone now. SH2. What's SH2? I'm blanking on that one. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. SH2. Silent Hill 2. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played any of the Silent Hill games. I need to eventually. Those would be good for October, actually. I'll have to, I'll have to, like, put, uh, look into that. Epiphany. Yeah, something like that. Kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. Try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. Give me a second, I'm just stretching a little bit. Ugh. Back was just a little bit stiff there. Ugh. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water, too. Ugh. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright, now we need to show it off to Sayori. This is a good poem, Alistair. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? Uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Let's, uh, don't touch the HD versions of 2 and 3. If you do, I'll find you and take all your treasure. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Are the HD versions really that bad? I, I, are they like butchered like like how um like how Capcom kind of butchered uh the remake of uh Resident Evil 3 oh oh they're glitchy oh yeah that'll do it okay yeah that that that's fair I understand I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously that you wouldn't write one at all I'm really happy that you wrote one it just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? Like I said before, Alistair. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Uh, thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, 
I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. J just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Yeah! Monica's the best! But next time I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Phew. I guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. I was a little more stressful than I anticipated. As if as everyone it's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. <sighs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki I Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant a language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, I do have a su couple suggestions. <sighs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Alistair did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. Appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Alistair liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Ah, oh, God, this shit. Ah, oh, Ken! Hey, how's it going? Um, we get a shout out for Ken. Uh, Shia. It's, uh, do, do, do you know how to do this, Shia? I don't think I've put you on this spot before. Congratulations, you're a mod. You have to do a mod thing now. But yeah, Ken, how's it going? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm replaying uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, you know, since it was the, the first thing I ever streamed on Twitch, like, way back in, like, 2017. Uh, the, the command... Okay, so it's... Uh, I'll, I'll do it myself so you can see, but it's uh, exclamation point S-O, and then it's space, and then you go at... And then you just type in their name, or you just type in like the the start of their name, and Twitch will like auto complete it for you. So there you go, like that. And that that uh, that'll do the thing, and make Nightbot go ah yes, shout this person out. Anyway, uh oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member Yuri. Uh. Wait, hang on. I wasn't paying attention. Did the, mu did the music stop before I, I went over? Okay, yes, it did. Okay. That's not what I... Uh, you're just... Maybe you're just jealous that Alistair appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't pre appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. I, if I was full of myself... I would deliberately go out of my way to make something I do- to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh! Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Alistair started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned toward me as if I- they just noticed I was standing there. Alistair! 
She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. I just... If she could just get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of all your poems... Making your poems all convoluted for no reason? Meaning to jump out at the reader, not force them to, ha to have to figure it out themselves. Help me explain that to her, Alistair. But wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Alistair? Uh... Well? Uh... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course that's going to be... Uh, ba 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 Yeah, it's got the Yuri. Natsuki, you're right that I like your poem. Wait, it's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. It's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, well that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well and she just told her how you felt. This wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. I, it was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped and at this point feeling... At this point, being defined only because she can't handle the pressure. And you end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sorry, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki s snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki, she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri! How could anyone have not gotten frustrated after being treat treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Alistair, you're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, the one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna make some tea. Uh, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did y'all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Alistair, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learn something from your friends, too. Your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit, a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Alistair, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Huh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. <sighs> you know, Alistair, it's nice that I get to spend some time with you at the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Well, 
We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay, let's see. <sighs> Vertigo. Uh, intellectual. Uh, starscape. After image. Um, entropy. Determination. That just makes me think of, um, like Undertale, right? I haven't played Undertale in a really long time. I kind of want to do that again at some point. You know? I... God. I think it'd be fun, you know? Just revisit that, uh, that game. Just considering, like, how long it's been. Um... I want to go back and, like... I, I need to, like, get reacquainted with the lore, honestly. Um... Just so I can get, like, an idea of... I don't know, like... I want to I want to be able to like pose some like uh, some predictions about what's gonna happen in like uh, Deltarune chapter two and onwards. Like, um, well, I, I'll say this much: um, the um, what was it? The in uh, Deltarune chapter one, you can go to the uh, the mayor's office, but you can't actually see the mayor. Um, and they they say that the mayor is a is a girl, and that's all we know about the mayor. And I am betting dollars to spider donuts that it's Muffet. I I think Muffet would absolutely be the the mayor of the uh, the monster town. I I feel like she's got uh, them politician vibes. You know, if she's if she's not a business owner, absolutely would be a politician. I think. Hi, Alistair. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing for you to get you in a good mood. I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. You come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So you're either not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. There's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that leaves... That only leaves the one option. Ah, uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Alistair to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh... <laughs> really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but that's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. See, you say that, but you did, in fact, only join because of the cupcakes. You, you, you even said earlier you sold your soul for a cupcake. What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Eh, is this a miracle? 
It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. Then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. Yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do I think why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. I'm still really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> so he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez! I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, there suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. You and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds so cool. I'll, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Alistair. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book than from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was just kind of waiting for you. Ah, uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. You mind if I go make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. There's one thing that can make my reading time here any better. It's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Uh... Yeah, it's, uh... I, now, now that I'm, like, playing this game uh, again, like, a second time, I'm picking up on a lot of the, uh... Little little bits of uh, foreshadowing they do throughout the whole thing to, you know, allude to the shit that's actually going to happen later on. Um, where are you two off to? Eh? We're just, Yuri was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Damn! Or do you want me- or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Alistair in club activities? Eh? My mouth gapes. 
I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Alistair. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Yeah, Monica getting uh, just a little bit jealous there, right? Yeah. I spoke without thinking. Could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Alistair, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is bad is as bad as to make you seem as to make it. Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. I don't know why I struggled so hard with that sentence. Po buddy's nerfect. Uh, you always have to amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Don't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. And a friend would do that. Friend, you say. Uh, um, Yuri lifts her head. Alistair, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yeah. I'm also, um, something I never really dug too deep into is, um, well, we'll get to it later, but there's, like, there's, like, an underlying narrative that's completely unrelated from DDLC, and I, I can't remember, I think people were thinking it was, like, a possible, like, sequel game or another game that Dan was working on. So, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I'll get, I'll get more into it once we get there, because, like, if there's people watching that don't know what happens in this game, I don't want to, like, say it out loud before we get there. There could, there could be, like, lurkers, like, ah, I've never seen this game before. I want to, I want to watch this, this, uh, fluffy panda man, uh, play this game. Here he sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. It's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll prob you'll only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will! Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring tea leaves. My surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. Sorry, I'm gonna get a little more water myself, actually. I'm a little, little dehydrated. doing a bit of thinking, and I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's very hard for me to do. It's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Alistair. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I'll let Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Alistair, I have another request. Mind if I sit if we sit on the floor today? Eh, why that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, huh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I'd do my best to make <laughs> Yeah, you would have back pain, would you? I wonder why that is. It's mostly because of my uh of my posture, right? Always well, hunched over like that while reading. Yeah, it's the posture. It's the posture. Don't you worry, guys. Yeah, I have terrible reading posture. Uh, so that's why I should sit on the floor. Fair enough. Go ahead and get the book. Retrieve the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. You and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. So if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see it too well. He slides closer until our shoulders are touching. Am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but she's being less apprehensive. It's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. 
Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. If you let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... It's okay, I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. As a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situa as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did did I just? She looks at me as if she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Alistair. I'm sorry. Guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's well, we were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. Ah, uh, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. This time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I can feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Ugh. Uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Alistair, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri packs up the teacups from the floor. Pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Alright. So now we gotta go through all the poems again. Let's see what you have written for today. Alistair, this one might be even better than yesterday's. Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. Probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. You really think that? About the official RE2 board game. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yo. I, I, sh I should look at... I'll, I'll look into that. That sounds fun. Play that sometime. I, 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 surprised. I get you know every time I, I hear about a board game based on a video game, I'm always surprised. But it's like, uh, you know, I, I should stop being surprised because there's so many like, like board games based off of uh like, video games. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, as, as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, the raccoon an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, 
the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. We could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and feed myself again. Hmm. It's a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express it the way it feels for me to indulge my more unusual hobbies. The sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because... They're embarrassing. People would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Alistair? Uh, I plead the fifth. It's the best. We, the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Uh, even if it's difficult sometimes, and sometimes things make us uncomfortable. Let's just move on from that. Move on. Move on. Move on. <laughs> After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Listen, writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Alistair. Uh, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Mary smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seeds, it seems to disappear. Let's get Natsuki, Natsuki out of the way, because she's going to be upset again, because we wrote for Yuri. Hmm. Well, I can at least admit it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh? What do you mean by that? You almost don't need to be all deep-sounding to express something. It's just going to sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't even bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Eh? You're not... You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? Uh, what are you talking about? Keep your voice down. You know Yuri loves this kind of stuff. This angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean... I, I mean... Ugh! Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. But what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Husky shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. You wrote it for someone else. Don't, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Since I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Yeah, we don't even get to see her poem because she's mad at us now. <laughs> I love reading your poems. It's like I never know what I'm going to get. So basically you're saying it sucks. No, not at all. Maybe. Just a little? You must have spoiled me a little bit with her poems. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. After all, I still have no idea what kinds of writing you even like. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? <laughs> yeah, jealousy at its finest, really. Yeah, that's uh, she, she went uh, a few steps beyond Sundere there. That's so sweet. Yeah, right. You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you some liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. Sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help give that rain how to, can help give the rain cloud a little hug, and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Alistair. I should go write that down then. 
You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend needs to feel as sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, pulling them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I keep, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Ooh. Yeah, that one. That one hits fucking hard, dude. Yeah, but I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. Yeah, Monica taught you that, huh? Mo Monica, Monica taught you to be like real in touch with those feelings of yours? Hmm. Gee willikers, it feels as though she might be pulling some strings, doesn't it? I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Ha ha ha. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Get, get ahead. <laughs> Sarah has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be so pessimistic. Hi again, Alistair. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Do you want to share what you wrote for today? Uh, sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, this one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. I can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. When she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep to herself so much. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, well, you, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. Colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. 
The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza, on a, on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless load me. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole red, green, blue. RGB. Yeah. Those are the colors that make up the pixels in your uh, computer monitor. Fun fact. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've really never seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote those lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's so hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! You never know when you might change your mind. When something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this TP even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought I, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's so putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It took a lot for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and each put out a good performance, and we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! Yeah! That's what literature's about! Literature's all about happy things, and, and fun things, and nothing bad ever happens. I know you do too. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Oh, thanks, Natsuki. What about, Yuri? what about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectively glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha, <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. 
You'll be fine, Yuri. <sighs> you think I don't see what you're doing? You, 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 look, look, look at her face. Look at how nervous she is. Let's move on to the main event. Let's move on from that. Let's, let's just ignore that that even happened. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. I, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. If you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Sorry. Ugh, long week. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself, and she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or she's simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished the finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next? Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> Ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri is fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri gl anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just moments ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the, into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, but she enunciates with perfect timing. It must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if he, she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimless, aimlessly cheery as like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. Hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Alistair liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. And you might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that sort of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. 
Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Alistair. It's not like I can compare, it's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Alistair lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Wow, real nice. Might as well get this over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. I'm not exactly confident in my own writing. It's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. Just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki be begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style. It works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. Words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier than put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Oop, kind of bumped the mic there. That's just how it is, so. I guess in that case, I won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. Probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. And the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. Stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica that I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. You make such a big deal out of it. it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? Okay, Alistair, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I'll walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have changed already. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh... I mean... Uh, knowing what I know, it's 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 much harder to pick this, but... Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ha <laughs> you've admitted it. Jeez. It's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But, uh, but I just like to think about it. Not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori! I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone's different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm feeling. I'm left feeling awkward. It's kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. If there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. But I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? 
I know. I know what will happen. Okay, so I'm actually gonna like save real quick here because I, I, I wanna I wanna go for like a perfect poem this time, okay? Um. So it, I I was having this like a thought, um, like. The, the, the whole, like, reading poems out loud, like, kind of reminded me of, um... Uh... I, there was a time in, I think it was third grade. I think it was third grade, where we, we wrote poems, just like this. And, um... We weren't told ahead of time that we would have to read them out loud. So, um... I, I wrote something that was a little bit personal. I knew the teacher would see it, but I didn't expect anyone else to have to, like, listen to it. Um... So when it came around and, and uh, the teacher was like, "Okay, it's time for uh, it's time for everyone to read their poems out loud," and she like came to me, I'm like, I I I, I was just like, no, no, and and she was like, N no no, Alistair, you have to. I'm like, N no, I don't wanna. And she just kept like pushing and pushing. Like she wouldn't let me get out of it. She, she couldn't like understand that, you know, maybe a kid wrote something that they don't want everyone to hear about. It couldn't get that through her fucking skull. Like, how do you be, how are you that fucking stupid? How are you that fucking tone deaf to like the, the kids, right? How, how can you be that stupid? Ah, fuck. I didn't think, to why the fuck does Sayori like the word scars? Um. But anyway, like, I don't know. It was, it was really kind of upsetting. God damn it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I gotta focus on this now a little bit. Just like finding these words that uh, fucking Yuri likes here. Anyway, are, are you kidding? Come on. It's it's like Sayori is just trying to like cock block me right now. I'm I'm doing I'm doing my best here, man. I'm doing my best. Uh, these are particularly okay. There we go. Like, you gotta you gotta find like all the all the big words. You don't know what they mean. You gotta avoid like the words that Sayori likes. I uh, I don't I don't know. Hang on. Can I, can I save like part way in? I can. Okay. Oh, uh, they they do like um. I think they shuffle each time though. Um. Romance. I don't fucking know. No. Damn it. No, it resets. Oh, that's bullshit. Come on now. I, ca I can't like save my place like halfway in. <sighs> Sucks. Just trying to get like one of the perfect like poems. I have to choose like 20. Oh my God. There's so much like overlap between them. It's so hard. This, this is the dark souls of poetry writing. Ah, oh, that's right. No, she likes her unrequited. God damn it. Um. No, not heartbeat. Disown. Okay, sure. Ah. Uh, Roland, sure. Um, I got. I gotta focus really hard on this. Okay, cool. Extraordinary. No! Damn it! I, I already saw that happen with fucking extraordinary. It's a big word, so I think it's gonna be like something Yuri likes. Yuri likes big words. Um. Oh, come on! Come on, I'll get this. It sucks that they make you restart. Like, you can't save partway in. That's so fucking stupid, dude. Here, uh, secretive, sure. Effulgent, sure. Determination, I know that one works with her. Intellectual works with her, I know. Vertigo works with her. 
Uh, I'm, I'm just slowly learning all of the words that she likes. Um, tenacious, yeah. After image. Uh, contamination, probably. Graveyard, yeah. Uh, no, fuck, that's right. Damn it, I forgot. Like, as soon as I clicked on it, I realized, no, unrequited is Sayori. <clears throat> Damn it. Uh, okay. All right, I can get this. I can get this. All right, we're, we're at we're at a point where I think I know most of her words, and I can probably get this. Um, captive? Yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, none of these really. Okay. Determination, I know. Incongruent, I know. Uh, I don't think depression. Depression would probably pop up with Sayori. Wrath? Yeah, that'll do it. Not extraordinary. Don't do that one again. Uncontrollable. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, crimson she likes, yeah. Uh, we're so close. We're so fucking close. Come on now. Uh, analysis. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, after image. Yeah. Okay, two more, two more, two more. Come on. Intellectual. Yep, I know she likes that one. Uh, tenacious. We did it! I got it. I done went and did it. Perfect poem. Hell yeah. You're practicing piano again. Yeah. <laughs> Must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? Pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because. It's right in your name. Monika. Eh? It's not how you say my name at all. So that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> God, that's that, that's great. I, I I do like the little uh, you know taps on the fourth wall before we just you know take a sledgehammer to it. <laughs> well, there you are. Sarah's so sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. Walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. Wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? She's facing out again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh. Is everything all right? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Oh, all right. You say so. I worriedly glanced at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. Conversations have already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe you should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together! Yeah. Yeah, they really are spending a lot of time together, aren't they? Hmm. I'm sure that's not, you know, suspicious or anything. Timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Alistair, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed, and noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Alistair. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. This time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. I care about the well-being of all, of all my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed to be wanted to like, she, 
She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? She just has a hard time bringing up with a, with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Alistair. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sari talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Alistair. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her so as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. Watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. She's keeping her voice quiet, quiet so I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else. It's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting her weigh me down that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. She looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit ne in one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. If you would prefer to just share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. When I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. <sighs> Sarah and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Uh, I see. Perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about your, her feelings. Maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Alistair... The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. There are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Uh... So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on, on, the, may be going on inside her head. She may not always know what she means. Or wants. What she wants, yeah. I also feel some concern for her. In your case, it looked like she was fully occupying her your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. You don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Very suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Uh, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. But I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. Not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. 
Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their, their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alistair? Your writing has only improved these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this natural, naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. Kind of a shame. Maybe, but... I feel like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Alistair, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to spend to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. And people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me, don't tease me for spacing out all the time, they don't make fun of my body type, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Alistair. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write, but it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Alistair. I speak too slowly, second-guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me like, treated me just like every, anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light Part 2. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I'm too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and, dros and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. Instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh... No, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri's having an even time, even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. 
I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... Um... Poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Alright, Natsuki time, you get real fucking mad at me. Yeah, no thanks. Eh, you didn't even- NEXT! <laughs> Easy. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well... No need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Eh? I didn't write this poem for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Alistair. Sayori. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Yeah, she, uh... Sayori's not doing too well. Hi, Alistair. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. Whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Also make me happy. It'd also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Michelle's gotten so refined, Alistair. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting used- I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Uh, that's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know? Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. Makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. All right, all right. I get you. Just be careful, all right? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if, it, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Mm-hmm. All right, Monica. Anyway, I'll share my poem now with you now, all right? Uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift to the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky, until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. A hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, 
the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back, back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Take a quick drink of water here. Ugh. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the, are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. Never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean if everything was okay. We wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean, one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, humans aren't just two-dimensional creatures. Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. Hmm. I, yeah. I felt that, I felt that just a little bit recently. <laughs> if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way. It'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. Deviated from your, normal, from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Oh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, seems you're right. Ah, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. That's so. I hope she's alright. Seriously? All times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me lately, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? A curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. So what did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sorably helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Um... Guys... Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no that's not it at all. The most talented person here, you know. N now, Natsu now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. Guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Her mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. Uh, but anyway, that just leaves you, Alistair. 
it's me. Yes. Now I get to do the thing. Uh, yes, I will... I will steal uh, all of the food from the other clubs so that we have the really good food. And it will bring in a lot of people. Actually, just steal the people, honestly. I'll just, I'll just grab the people, stuff them in a sack, and then just, like, bring them over. I'll just dump them out at the door. No one will be any the wiser. It'll be the greatest heist of all time. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, the MC is kind of useless, isn't he? Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. Probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You always help me out as well. Be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Mono suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Hester may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, you may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? It sounds more like you're just making excuses for Alistair to... What are you saying? I, it, will, it will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. So what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Alistair how he'd like to contribute. Besides... He hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Just settle this already? Yeah. Astro, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hm. Very well. In that case... Uh... So yeah, the, the only the only two real choices here are Yuri and Natsuki. Well, actually, this is DDLC Plus. I wonder if maybe they added a little bit. I want to see. I want to see if maybe they added something here. I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me. Hold on one second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Eh, but I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already the most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Alistair was the one who... Uh... That doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to be... Res you're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? W what are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones who... In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with the ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise... This wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we, went to our, if we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh... So you're gonna do the right thing, President? Okay, okay. I get it. It's technically the most logical for Alistair to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. I mean, it can be anyone that prefer helping Sayori. You know, we're already neighbors, and Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, you really hate us that much? No, I don't mean... Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? Yeah, alright, it's the same deal. You can't choose uh, Monica or Sayori. You have to choose either Natsuki or Yuri. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, a little bit more of a stretch. Ugh. N no, I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Alistair? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you, will you, be, hand will, pff, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. You feel the same way, Alistair? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. 
It's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Ria anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Alistair picked me. And also, the cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. But why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. You're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I, I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at the time at a time like this. Just because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Uh, um, yeah? I turn around. Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. All right, then. You're gonna exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that would make sense. If you don't mind, I think I would prefer going, into your, going to your house. All right. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way, so I'll just need to make sure my, my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Alistair. I think that we'll make a very productive team. If you only choose, chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. Just to help you because that's what I want to do. B but... Yuri thinks to herself an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. Who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel so nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Nothing bad will happen. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. Uh... Yeah. Uh, we're, uh... Well, we're, we're moving along pretty well here. We're almost at the, uh... At the, the big event. The, uh, the club day. The day of the club... The, the club fair, or whatever it is. The festival. The festival, that's it. The day of the festival. Um... So we, we have... We have this... We have this, uh... Big, like, uh... Event with Yuri. And then we move on to the... The, to the club festival and then and then the rest of the game that comes after that <laughs> I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over 
Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. House is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's, a, it's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Alistair. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has re really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. Eh? It's not... It's not that messy. You got a little scrap of paper there. You got maybe like a like a shirt thrown over a chair and some pants on a shelf, but like, it's not really that messy. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> Came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Zuri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Zuri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. And something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Suri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Alistair. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings. I didn't make that stupid mistake. You wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't even be thinking about me right now. This is its just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why we the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? You listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Sarah gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Alistair. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. I'm just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Alistair? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. That's why I just want everyone... Why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. As if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Alistair. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have had then you would have had to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. It also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. Then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. 
<laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Alistair. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could have could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart hurting in a way I, that I couldn't understand. Now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once, again, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Alistair, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, else this, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Alistair, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Alistair, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But I, all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make those feelings go away. Man. <sighs> they really do make the MC just, like, totally oblivious and, like, tone deaf, don't they? Like, when there's a person in the situation, this is not how you respond. You're actively making it worse. I get mad if you don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Alistair. Anytime I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How'd you like me to s how'd you like for me to spend it all with you? Um ah. Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. All days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. <sighs> yeah, really managed to fucking bungle that, didn't you, Alistair? Jesus Christ. MC, uh, well, you know, MC doesn't have much experience with this sort of thing. Had no idea what was even going on, but yeah, given what she said, that's not the right way to respond to any of that. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried on more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that, for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. So you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. Did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. First thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I wish my room was this big. Damn. 
Like, I can barely fit my bed and my desk in here as it is. And he's got, you know, he's got a desk, he's got a nice big bed, he's got, like, all the space. He's got space for, like, a TV and, like, a whole, like, media cabinet. Look at this shit. Bro, dude's living, like, swanky as hell. I want a room like this. Damn. I cleaned it before you came over, so... It's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I'd be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I'd have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist while sh she was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrists. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yeah. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. In this stream, Zoomer goes going bonkers over a medium-sized room with no windows and three items in the room. <laughs> I- okay, okay. First of all, first of all, I am not a Zoomer. Shut the fuck up. I'm a millennial. I'm Gen Y. Excuse you. And secondly, like, I- what do you expect? I live in a, a tiny, like, little one-person apartment. There's, like, there's room for, like, my dresser and my bed and my desk. And, and that's about it. That's, that's, that's pretty much all I got here. I mean, we don't know that there's no windows, by the way. Like, there could be a window, like, on this wall, like, you know, up against this desk here. There could be one on the wall, like, behind us. But, like, look at all this floor space. Like, there's still room to, like, walk around in the room. Atmospheric enhancements. You know. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop just stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm, de I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. Pulls out a few candles and wooden and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with how familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Is that so? It's one of my favorite contribution contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer, and your heart pounds more heavily. Backlight window behind the computer screen, fat chance. Ah. <laughs> uh. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of just waiting for Yuri to, like, start, like, uh, pull out her, like, little, uh, you know, bag of doTERRA and be like, oh, yeah, you know, if, if, if you're curious about essential oils, I have a whole bunch right here. Um, I'm selling them, you know, at a, at a very reasonable rate. <laughs> Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She once again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are these for? What are those for? Well... Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll write about a hundred. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? 
Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It also catch the eye of those passing by the room. We attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you would be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. It's just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Alistair. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you finish once I finish. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern in wa of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. That's not a knife! This is a knife! Looks really fancy. Ah, uh, uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? I'm gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Each their own, you know? If you promise you won't- if you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. Thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I I can't help it. I don't know what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Ugh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Yeah, you know, who, who, who'd have thought Yuri would be into knives? I'm sure that won't come back later. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Here, if it's of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Alistair! God, it's the start of Subnautica all over again. You first make the survival knife, and you immediately cut yourself on it. Because the, the guy you're playing is a fucking moron. I barely touched it at all. It, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. You can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. Small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. He takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. He stares at it and noticeably fidgets. You're squeamish. I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Uh, ah. Without warning, Yuri puts her finger in my mouth and licks the wound. I can feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I, ex I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, oh. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yeah. Into knives. Into, uh... Into blood? Yeah, hmm, I wonder. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How'd I do something like that? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, well, you know, it's 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 not like that. I, I wasn't weirded out by you doing that. It's just the fact that I have a blood disease and now you're going to die. You know, that's, uh, that's a real shame. Sorry to, sorry to, you know, have to tell you that. She was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. If she doesn't recover from this from the rest of her from the rest of the afternoon. All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. Take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Alistair, you really just do that? It, now we're even. She just looks at me like it did something wrong. <laughs> ah, I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil. The air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Alistair. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It's a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. Attention is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. Watch Yuri's knife cut through the living through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper... Uh-oh. I just blew right past that somehow. Paper to the ribbons. We lay them all out side by side. Looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. 
Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. You need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. You mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. Be right, I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. Fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. See, that's that's never how like we did watercolors in school. Watercolors, like you, you got like a like a like a row of tablets. You got, you got a little like plastic holder, and each one had a little tablet in it. And you just got your brush wet, and then you use the water to like mop up some paint with it. And uh, you know, being kids, like most kids, ended up with like really dirty paints because they wouldn't like fully rinse their brushes off between uh between colors. So you'd get like, you know, ah, the red is smeared with like all kinds of like blue and like purple and green and now it looks all brown and gross. <laughs> There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote aqu across the banner. You can hang it on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be, more, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, oh, sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. She stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. Just like where I can spend time with one person. Even if it's something simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just like, just having a friend next to me makes me feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. What do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> what do you think streaming is? I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my hand to bump into hers. <gasps> oh no, the accidental hand touch. Now everything is awkward and uh, everyone's blushing. It's like, oh man, I guess we have to kiss now. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. The droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. There's something on my face. Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I shout and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, they did this part. Gently, uh, you know, rub, rub face with towel. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait, eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What's happening? Is the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrists send a tingling sensation through my arm. Suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I'm feeling a little lightheaded today. Didn't mean to space out. It, it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. 
That should do it. Finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. It's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? Totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So you don't have any time left? Secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Mary thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. Or no, that- or is that me? Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. The important thing is we got everything done, right? Yeah. So? Shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It's not like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. That doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out of the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Oh, I forgot you don't like going out much. I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Alistair. Yuri takes a step closer to me and briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S Sayori! Eh? Uh, hi, Alistair. Sayori, just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Alistair. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. Sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? It's too bad. I'm sorry. We'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Totally embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. More water. Me drink. Thirst. All this reading out loud really dries your throat out. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come over here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Alistair? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Ah, oh, God. Not this part. I don't like this part, man. This part hurts me. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. It would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Alistair. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. She just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. We're not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. Oh, oh, you're going, you, oh, you're making it so much worse. You're making it so much worse, dude. But, but, Sayori looks away, put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Alistair. 
I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Alistair, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... It's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand into my own. Remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Don't say that. Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. If you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. No, you don't! No, you fucking don't! You're not a goddamn psychiatrist! That's what I'm going to give to you. Yeah, mm, yeah, you, you sure, do, mm, yeah, words, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you know exactly what's best for her. I'm sure you're gonna make a real smart fucking decision. MC is so stupid. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happy you seemed happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best, what will make you happy in the end. I promise that I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I see. Sari forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> this is what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest. I should write a poem about this. Sayori! It's okay. This is just my punishment. Remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I know this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. So I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I just want to, wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Alistair. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Sari's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Ah! <sighs> Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sari looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. Most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. God. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd walk in, be walking to school with Sayori. Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but, that, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the, f feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. Alistair! You're the first one here! Man, there sure is no music right now! I'm sure that's not, you know, uh, threatening. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems re performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But if I should have gone to wake her up after all? <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Alistair. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. Kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Hey, Monica. Hey, Monica. 
fuck you. Fuck you. Let me just let me just get get back into my spot here. Hang on. I gotta, gotta I gotta get back. Gotta get back where I was. Hang on. Like that? So I like that? I think I'm I think I'm like that, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Shia. <laughs> Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. Uh, but, I stammer, embarrassed. Does Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being friendly as usual, but for some reason I feel a chill running down my spine after, hear that, after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? Flip the Sayori's poem. It's different from the one that she practiced. It's one I haven't read before. <laughs> Get out of my head before I do what I know what is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. <sighs> Fuck me, I know what's coming. Alistair, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even, a, even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they've always been. It's all she needs, and that's and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's, since she's, not, since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. Alright, here we go. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? She really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. <sighs> yep. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I know it's... I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Bring down her confession? It has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school. And gave her what I know she, what she wanted out of our relationship. 
then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. It's in some game where I can reset and try something different. Fuck that, man. Fuck this game, man. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Welcome to the real game! Yeah, no shit this game ain't for people who are easily disturbed! Yeah, uh... Well, we know what happens here. Yep. Files missing or corrupt. Save files corrupt. Starting a new game. Yep, welcome to the new game! Uh, that girl is... Um, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. Yeah. Uh, well, shit's hit the fan now. An ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there'd be any girls in it anyway. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. I pack up my things. As after I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs there really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for uh. For me to want to deal with. So I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Alistair? <laughs> Monica! Ah, uh, gosh, it's so good to see you! Uh, uh, please go away. You know, I'm, I'm starting to get kind of curious, actually. Um, like, how, uh... Because here's the thing, you gotta fiddle with, like, the actual game files for this, uh... For DDLC to work properly. I'm really curious how they futzed with it with uh, like the Switch and like console versions. Because DDLC Plus came out on consoles too. What'd you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. You know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Haha, <laughs> about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Yeah. Uh, in that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Uh, literature! Uh, jeez, uh, I- yeah, sure, I love literature. I'd- I'd love to come to your literature club. Uh, well, I can see that. Not really boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. Besides, a member's a member, right? Monica say she. Hmm. Hey, Alistair. Any chance... Are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Alistair, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. Yeah. I dejectedly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Monica, full of energy, swings the open the classroom door. I'm back! I brought a guest with me! A guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Uh, 
Uh, hang on. So I, I I have I have this for a reason now. It's uh is it? Oh, it goes. Ah, oh, it's going off screen. God damn it! Hang on. I'm I'm gonna have to actually physically move myself in V in V Studio. Hang on. Shift myself over to the side a little bit. Now 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 if you if you all take a take a nice little take a little gander over here. Like just just right right uh, right, uh, right right right. Hang on. Hang on. God, I, uh, I, I I shrunk the the resolution to like make it easier on my computer, but this is just making things more difficult. God damn it! I can't I can't even point at the thing I want. Like, zoom out, zoom out. Hang on, it's right, it's right, right, uh, right there. Ever, everyone, everyone, take a to you seeing that? Everyone getting a good look at that? I'm getting a good look at that. Okay, now I gotta futz with putting everything back the way it was. God damn it! Hang on. Wait, no, no, I, I've eh. Working this digital puppet is more difficult than it seems, I assure you. Alright? I gotta just... Eh, no. Resize the window. Shrink me. Pack me di back down into the corner where I belong. Nope. I've moved the entire overlay now. Why am I so bad at this? Okay. Alright. We good? Am, am, I, am I done being a scuff tuber? Don't be so mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Alistair. All words escape me in this situation. This club. So we get booba zoom-ins even on big tubers. Yeah, really. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Bo uh, no, I'm not. Natsuki. Uh, small figure makes it a good first year student. Anyway, uh, it's Yuri, the vice president. Yuri, who appears apparently more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. So I ran into Alistair in a classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, did I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you come sit down, Alistair? Girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. He walks to the corner of the room and opens a closet. We all Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna just skip through this a little bit because we've seen a lot of this. Uh, such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. Carefully place the teacup in front of us. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, now, now you're starting to see, uh, you know, just, just what happens when, uh, Sayori isn't here. I mean that, you know, I believe you. Tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Uh, yeah, I just mainly read manga. Natsuki perks up a little. Complex fantasy worlds, yep. Reading a lot of horror lately. Yeah. I'd expect something from that, you. You're in. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Ugh, I hate horror. I just. Husky's dies are over to me for a split second. Never mind. Yeah. You're right about cute things, yeah. Uh, you wouldn't like them. Not a very confident writer. Yeah, no one's a confident writer, so we're gonna we're gonna write poems. That's the idea. Yay, everybody write poems. Ooh. I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it's a good step for us to take. You agree as well, Alistair? Hold on, there's still one problem. Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. Never said I would join. Uh, you convinced me to stop by. Before, I've been trying really, really hard to find new members, and we don't find one more before the festival. That's us against these girls. Yeah, you need four four members for the for the club. Yeah, we yeah, now you're gonna join the club. Woohoo! Yay! We end today's meeting, and now, uh... We all, uh, write, uh, 
We all, we all, we all gotta write the, 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 uh, the poems. Yes, let's go. Hooray. Poem time. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's poem time. Asuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. So I have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. All right. I didn't remember the circumstances. I'm never far as charging. Bah, bah, poem. We're at a poem tonight. <laughs> Unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yeah. Things I like about Papa. I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. I like when Papa gives me allowance. I like when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks me about my friends. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me lunch money. I like when Papa comes home before sundown. I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I, I, like, when Papa goes, I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my friends. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like when Papa uses his inside voice. I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins in the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. Um, very, very, very likely written by Natsuki right there. I'm pressured to get milk go get milkshakes before it gets dark, so I have to head out. Uh, have fun with the girls. I'm sure you have beat it in a snap. <laughs> Shut up, Shia. All right, take care. Have fun getting milkshakes. Yeah, these uh, none of these words are really uh. Yeah, none of these words uh fit with um with Sayori like the last set did. Uh, all right, she likes extraordinary forever. Uh, let's do this like fast. Uh, all right, no, she likes that again. Oops. Anyhow. Hi again, Alistair. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Oh, well, I'm back at the literature club. I was last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Cool face. Thanks for keeping your promise, Alistair. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Nice body, uh, Natsuki. Don't take that out of context. Don't take that out of context. Music's a little, uh, music's a little off, uh, out, out of tone, isn't it? Yeah, I need to... There, that's better. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. If you don't take us seriously, then you won't hear, then you won't see the end of it. <laughs> Monica, you're kind of in the way. Manga is literature. Sorry, Alistair. Make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Here he shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, not sure in the club at all. Perhaps you have an interest in picking up a book to read? Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. I'm also noticing that the whole room is tilted. That ain't right. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. No, no, no. Give, give, me, give me the book. Give me the book. Hand me the book. Give, just give me the book. Give the book to me. Yep, it just straightened out. There we go. Let's rummaging around in the closet. I'm curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. Well, I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. That only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I'm out of this sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Uh, definitely start reading it soon. What's the story about? Portrait of Markov. This religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. 
He will trap there have the strength to turn them into killing machines with that lust for blood. The facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Well, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. N not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... Kind of dark, isn't it? Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Alistair? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Just that this kind of story... It kind of challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. Horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil. Because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. And suddenly... I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my... Or your whole body what now? Please stop me if I start talking too much. I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. At least I can do is listen. Right, actually, I want to see something. Oh, no, those those did show up, didn't they? Okay. That's true. In fact, I think I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes! I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> what are you saying? Get the book. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? Uh, yeah, you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not like I don't want you to. Just that's something I'm not very used to. It is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, let me know if I end up distracting you. Or if you distract me. Or, uh, you try to murder me. Ha ba 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 ha what? Oh, I fucking missed it. Shit. Something about bathing. You apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, this should work, right? Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Real quick. There we go. Looks like my left arm is in the way, so I use my right hand to hold the book open. Kind of difficult to turn the page. So left arm uh, holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, same with my right arm. Yeah, holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's distracting me. Are you ready? Turn the page. Uh, sorry, I think I got distracted for a second. Sorry if I'm re roll rolling through this just a little bit, like, fast, but, you know, we've already seen most of this. Actually, let me see if there's anything wrong with the background of this one. No. No, it looks fine. I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. So you've been so patient with me. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, she no longer asked if we are ready to turn the page. Intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? N no, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Uh, ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else. Never mind. I didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you, you feeling all right? Eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her, her hands to her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm, I'm fine. I just need some water. All right, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Yeah, I, she sure did seem to get real excited, uh, you know, reading this book about, uh, you know, fucking murder and shit. Something happened just now. Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. You're worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. N no, nothing. Hmm. Ugh. Nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. 
Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh? Should we wait for Yuri? Oh, she might be a while, so I figured we'd just get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up, I make a mental note of where I left out of left off in the book, then slip it into my bag. Try the Natsuki. Not only fair if I shared mine with her first. So you're not gonna take this seriously and go home. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not a writer. But an effort. Painful to think about. Fine. Sorry, you'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. I'm sure mine now. This one's the same. Yeah, I told you we weren't gonna like it. I like it! I am, I'm being honest. So, you know, why aren't you convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. Is the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yeah, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everything, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. The other nice thing is about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Except for rhyme at the end and let it fall fat on purpose. Yep. Um. Show it to Monica. Good time so far? Good, glad to hear it. Really, since you're new and everything, have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, don't worry, Alistair, we're all embarrassed today. Great job, I was going ooh in my head. Really underestimated you. Uh, full of, yeah, it's full of symbolism. You're definitely taking after Yuri. Oh wait, what was that about being too stimulated? She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Yuri! I'm back, did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started, char we all started sh sharing our poems with each other. Eh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. You still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time that you needed. Alright, thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. Uh, let's read the poem, yeah. See if this is any different. Ah, yeah. A continuation of the poem. Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frank frantically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. It's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform if that's what you call it. Pretty popular nowadays, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not sure how to put it. It's, I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. Epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. Keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. Kitsubani, the first person to redeem a hora hora. So, there's a lot of VTubers out there. Most VTubers, it seems to be kind of like a standard is to have an aura aura redeem, you know, where they go like, where they lean into the microphone and they go like, aura aura. And it's like, yeah, it's cool and all, but everyone does that. I want to be different. I want to be special, right? Okay. So, hang on. We're gonna, we're gonna turn. We're gonna turn the turn the. Wait, no. I, I shouldn't like move the slider. I should just kill the volume. Otherwise, I'm gonna like fuck up my audio balancing, and I'll never be able to recover it. Okay. So. <clears throat> let me let me just drag myself up here a little bit. Let's get get real big. Let's take up the screen. <clears throat> Hora, hora. Wait a minute. Do I have? Do I have a? Do I have a? Do I have a cool thing? No, I don't. I don't have a cool ex facial expression to make. Hora, hora. <laughs> hora, hora, hora. 
God. <laughs> How do people do this shit, man? <laughs> there, there you go. You, do, you, you got it. You got the, you got the first horror horror. We're ne just never doing that again. Until someone else redeems it. <laughs> Christ. How do, how do people like do that seriously? You got the first one. I'm probably the only like VTuber with uh, that has Hora Hora instead of uh, Ara Ara. So that makes me special. That makes me important. Remember that. I'm very cool and important and good. You should tell all your friends about me. Because I'm the best. Do it via magic. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah. Okay, so the, the advice didn't change that time. So now we show it to Yuri, right? As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. I say that out loud. Uh, he's gonna hate me. I didn't do anything wrong. Pretty sure all my friends are also your friends. <laughs> I mean, true. That's fair. So, so tell tell every stranger you meet. You know, just go out go out in the street with like a you know just write scrawl my name on like a piece of cardboard and like ring a bell like the town crier like hear ye hear ye. We have a red panda boy with fat fucking thighs. You should all go watch him. Well, I know. Anyway, uh. Form fit to fit together, yeah, yeah, talking about styles, putting them together, never mind, blah, 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 blah. To share my thought process behind it. It's, Yuri smells dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Just itself, it's kind of funny. For all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. Um. Yeah, this is, this is the same one. Sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. It's just, I don't read script often. It wasn't too short. I usually like longer poems. Not about a ghost, you stupid idiot. It's not more solemn putting it that way. I thought of that. Wait, is it? It was the, uh... Yeah. Okay, that was the same interpretation. Okay. So that's the same. So I'm just gonna try and fly through the stuff we've already seen. Like I was writing something in her notebook. Uh, as they read in tandem, I watch if each of their expressions change. Ah, cool music. Very cool uh, uh, tone. What's this language? Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe cute. I just meant that the language, I guess. Be nice to say. Now they're starting to bicker. Monica liked it, and Alistair did too. Based on that, I'll gladly give you some some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. Appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless I find something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Alistair liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? eh? It's not what I... Uh, y you're just... Yuri stands up as well. You're just jealous that Alistair appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? Now you know he didn't appreciate my advice more. Are you that full of yourself? I... No. I was full of myself. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. And we're rapidly approaching the point where Sayori stepped in and stopped the argument. But she's not here to stop the argument this time. Ugh. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Alistair started showing up. Natsuki! Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Look who's talking, you wanna be edgy bitch! Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad, you already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Alistair hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, 
Suddenly, Yuri turns toward me as he just noticed I was standing there. A Alistair, she she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Uh, hi, Monica. Y you're li you're a little bit you're a little bit close there. Um, hey, Alistair, can we step outside for a little bit, okay? Sorry about that. We really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? Can't even confront my own club members properly. Just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with others, that's fine. I'd be happy to spend some time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. Yuri's rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? Didn't mean it. I, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Alistair. Please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Ray looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. Y you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take responsibility for, day for today. That sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It it's not that. It's not that. I just didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Alistair. It'd, be It'd just be embarrassing with you listening. Ah, I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I I'm sorry for causing trouble. Mm -hmm. okay, we're we're going to do this real quick then. Uh, just real quick, real quick. Uh, ba -ba -ba no, that's not it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, disaster. That disaster is a pretty good word for this. Disaster is, disaster fits this pretty well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Alistair. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression. But the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki's reading manga at a desk. Surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think that we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri... I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I'd already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. Now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, Alistair. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, uh, uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either, right? Yuri's clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. N no, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday, I wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? 
Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But, but... I accept your apology anyway if it makes you feel better about it. Yeah, it's just like Monica said. She totally forgot by today. Besides, that's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. Hehe. <laughs> No, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> You're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Husky turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not. <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Study hall. Yeah, you were practicing the piano. I guess we've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, this require a lot of dedication, so I'm still impressed. Aw, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <sighs> oh, yeah, she's writing a song. That sounds cool. Ah, I can't wait I can't wait to hear the song that she writes. I'm sure it won't stab me in the gut. I didn't mean to put any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. This is why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. Not really. I chose not to bring up... I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, so Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Master, uh, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I wonder if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned it that way anyway. Let's find a place to sit. I'm sorry, my heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Y yeah, but I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. Mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. I'll make some tea. Yeah. Then we, we make the tea. We go to the water pitcher. We make the tea. No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Oh, we don't go with her this time. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. There's something holding her up. I'm just bored waiting her, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri would be near be nearest water fountain. Start heading down the hallway. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <laughs> A sharp inhale, like someone's sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? Here's the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Ho! Bite the dust -o! I got it right the first time that time! I got it right the first time that time! I made... <laughs> I remember making that exact same joke <laughs> the, the first time I played this game. I fucked up the, the tone of my voice and I had to do it over. I got it right the first time that time. Bam! Redemption arc. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Master, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Here he sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. If I'm not an expert on tea or anything, uh, and you'll be even more impressed. I was doing a bit of thinking, I decided I'd try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's very hard for me to do, it's who goes around anyway. Don't push yourself too much. You know I can keep up with this. What if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? A little bit easier on my back. I can move my back against the wall rather than bending over my desk. So I do my best to manage it. Yep. Most likely because my... Yeah, your posture. That's it. We have, uh... Chocolates. Yep. I'm gonna set your hands up. It's almost more than I can handle. Teacup. Uh, because my little rounder has faded away. Just relax a little bit. As much as you want. Ah, it's I won't take any. You get smudges on the paper. Right. So that I don't have to any harder time reading from it. Uh, take another 
the chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, put the chocolate into her mouth. Did I just... Um, Alistair. I shouldn't have done that. Uh-uh. Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't. Alistair. Uh, suddenly Yuri grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Alistair. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Alistair. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Alistair? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. Even if it makes me not want to read. I just... To look. You... <laughs> I forgot about this part! I forgot about the fucking eyes! Uh. Oh, I forgot about the eyes. Please. Um, it's time to share poems. Hey, Arnotsky, you, you can take a look. Yeah, it's just I thought. Alistair, come on, I'm not stupid. I don't know how much time you've been spending with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to improve your writing. But bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Or even in this club. I'm not in a good mood today, so I just don't really feel like talking right now. Please go away. Show it to Monica. Alistair, I think you saw something earlier that you won't that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've been kind of enabling her. You've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault, though, but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that, sh that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. Put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like how this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Uh, save me. The colors, they won't. Bright, beautiful colors. Flesh and spin, piercing. Red, green, blue, endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveform, screaming, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent! Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. Endless, <clears throat> meaningless. Delete her. Wait, the, the, the capital, the capitalized, like, the caps locked, like, words. I can't help but, like, hear that in that one, like, text-to-speech voice. That sounds like it's always shouting! The one that talks like this! I, I don't know if you, like, recognize that. If, if you know, if you've heard it before, you know exactly which one I'm talking about. <laughs> Just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. But hap when that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, Yuri. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Alistair, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How'd you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job at explaining. I just wanted to try giving it more imagery. And her hands appear sweaty. It makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel that I'm valued, Alistair. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Alistair? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a harder time than usual concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. Right now, I just want you to read my poem too, okay? Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolthead, 
linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a th torn harness, parabolic a gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in a time-devouring written in time-devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, forty gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks us every second time, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears and open human eyes in all directions, breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy Holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing pear, prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Uh, that is, a, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I um, just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. Did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Yes, let's read the special poem. Stare at the dot to reveal a special message. I am staring. Aww. Cute. Does, does does it change a second time? I am staring. I am looking respectfully. Hey everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? Uh, this is about the festival. Yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a festival. Is everyone excited? We're gonna we're gonna have a festival and we're gonna do things. Share your passion. Yeah, share your passion with everyone. I can't take advantage of Alistair because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Do you think any of us here joined the club with the other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Alistair joined. As for me, I just like it better than what I do at home. And Alistair isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. You know your president and all? You really should consider our... Op our opinions for once. Sonic is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Alistair want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I'd probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation... Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club. Nothing more than a f place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? That doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Alistair, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, it's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, I remember you weren't even given a choice not, not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this, anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now ah, you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other people like that for me. Places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Alistair. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. This one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time. Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki! Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, I have an opinion on the festival. I don't know. 
I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? <laughs> yeah, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. What about you, Alistair? What do you want to get out of this club? He repeats the same question as Monica. I decide indirect answer better than nothing. Uh, everyone should get along. Yeah. Club provides something. Don't have anything else. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, whatever you say. Whatever you say. Hmm. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. Each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change, too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Taking out of your comfort zone once in a while. Oh, her eye is still bleeding. Oh, no. I'd still like to help Monica with the festival, but I'm on your side as well. All right. Maybe we can talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Hey, Yuri. Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. I'm going to do everything to make the best club ever. Yeah, let's all go home. Look forward to it. Shall we go? Uh, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with Alistair before we leave. I just want to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Well, Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay, I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew, things have been a little bit hectic lately, haven't they? Master, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I'd really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like I'm kind of responsible for that as president. I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how Natsuki is and, it is and everything, and Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? It's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. I, I mean, this has technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There's just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why- no, not yet. No, stop it! Bye! And there she is! She's down there! She's trying! She's- she's really trying. But, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think she can get up here. I think that's the problem. I don't think she's gonna be able to get back up here. Moving on. Hi, Alistair. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? Brought my best tea today. Monica, I told you not to... Uh, is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Me? N nothing Is it really that bad? See, it is something. I'll get over it. It's not even anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. A anyway, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just kind of felt like I needed to bring it up. It's not like I really care or anything. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again! Well, Alistair just walked in, too. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> I just have a lot of determination. I still make time for piano. Anyway, uh, we were all talking yesterday. We decided we would like to support the festival as well. However, I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So as long as we're all working together, this club will never become something we don't want. Um, also, if you would help us out with the festival, I'll buy you a new manga. <laughs> Sorry, that last part was really funny. Look, I did some, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know? So I'm gonna help too, and I'll make sure that it's done right. Thank goodness. Isn't that great, Monica? Monica? 
Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. Anyway, Alistair, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Uh, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Alistair's already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've gotten him to, into literature, Monica? I suppose it was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Cool face! Actually, I have a request. Mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. It's one thing that make It's a nice cup of tea. Uh... Oh, well, this is familiar. Especially because of her long ways, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Hey, may I have the water pitcher? Okay, you stay here. It won't take long. Turn hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Uh, did Yuri, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Okay, sorry for misunderstanding. That's best. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Uh, we've, we've, we've already been through this. I already did that. Hang on. Wait, how did I? I just had really weird deja vu. This hasn't happened before or anything, right? My head has been a little fuzzy lately. I hope it hasn't really been showing her anything. I'd hate for you to think I'm weird just after we started spending time together. I mean, everyone has a few unusual things about them. But expressing those things so soon after meeting someone is usually seen as inappropriate or unlikable. At least that's what I've discovered. When I was a bit younger, I think I would come on really strong and get a little too intense. It made people not want to be around me. So I started hating those things about myself. My obsession with certain hobbies, the way I can't control myself when I get too excited about something. So, I eventually stopped trying to talk to people. Nobody could ever like me for the things that mattered most to me, and it's just easier if I close myself off. But recently, something's been wrong. I don't know what it is. Every time we come to the club, my heart starts to go crazy. It's going to rip out of my chest. It overwhelms me with energy and emotions that I can't let out. It's been making me do weird things. I don't know why it's happening. Alistair, is it just me, or has Monica been acting a little off lately? She's always been a sweetheart ever since I joined the club. Recently, I've been feeling something sharp whenever she's around. Not crazy, right? Please tell me I'm not. Couldn't say anything before because she's always listening. But finally, we're alone. Can we just stay here for a while? Yeah. I just want to stay here. Just the two of us. We can stay here until the club ends. And we'll have the club room all to ourselves. Nobody to interfere with our reading time. Why do you make me feel like stabbing myself in the throat? Haha. <laughs> that was a joke. Just a joke. I do like knives, though. It sounds strange, but you wouldn't understand if you've never seen how beautiful they can be. I have an idea. You can come to my house sometime. I can show you my collection. I've gotten them all from various artisans. I can make sure to give them all their fair share of use. I don't want them to get lonely or anything. Nobody deserves to be lonely. Nobody. That's why I'm so happy you joined the Literature Club, Alistair. Now we don't need to be lonely anymore, because we have each other. Every day, that's all we need. You know what? Let's quit the literature club. There's no need for us to be around Monica's slimy tongue anymore. Not to mention that other pathetic child. We can walk home together every day after school, and read together, eat together, sleep together. Doesn't that sound perfect? It's everything we could ever want. Is that why you joined the club in the first place? It's almost like it was fate. Fate that we would meet each other. Now we get the, now we get the happy ending that I've bit, patiently waited years for. Will you do that with me, Alistair? Uh... Monica, hi. Don't say I didn't warn you, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> Natsuki. I'm going to read another one of yours. One of your Yuri suck-up poems. I'm gonna make you. I'm still gonna make you read mine. There's a reason. I really wish I didn't have to do this. Unfortunately, I don't have much of a choice. Just read it carefully, okay? Then you can go away. I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've 
been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. She's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive. Things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. If I just try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why. But please try to do something. Maybe you can con convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, if you can do something to help, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, Alistair? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Yeah, here we go. We're in the Just Monica arc now. Here's Yuri. Finally. <laughs> I love it. I love everything about it. Alistair, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it, please? Uh, sure, I don't care. <laughs> You're too nice to me, Alistair. Never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not, not really, but I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Yuri holds my poem to her chest. I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I'm going to make... I hope that it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. my poem too besides after you read it and know you're gonna to want to keep it here take it i can't wait any longer hurry read it uh i don't think these are words Closer. I can make out the word closer. Maybe these are actual words. Hang on. Uh, or maybe not. Uh, yeah. Draw, uh, that like, it looks like that looks like the word draw. It, we are closer. Yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, I'm, um, less concerned about the red stains and more concerned about the yellow one. Do you like it? I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about, more importantly, I've endowed it with my scent. So aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? I, I think I'm going to vomit. A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse last night. I was lost, looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge, empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Okay, everyone. It's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hang it over with. Stagnating air is uh, foreshadowing. Bad thing is something bad. Bad things are about to happen. 
Um, Alistair's gonna help me, obviously. Um, yeah, like, like you would fucking know. All you care about now is dragging Alistair around with you and your stupid books. You and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Alistair decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are, Monica. Just let Alistair make the choice, okay? Let me, let me see something real quick. Okay, fine. Oh, how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... Nuski, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth! For God's sake. This is never going to end. Just make the choice, okay? Yay, you picked me! We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. You us all the work and then taking Alistair for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Alistair away from me every single time you're not included in something? Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others? Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial to your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I want is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, Alistair. Yuri really is something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Finally. Finally. This is really all I wanted. Alistair, there's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> wow, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I've never felt this good my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone to care about you so much? To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you? But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I stopped trying... My, my, I tried my stopping myself at first. The feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore, Alistair. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Alistair, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touched myself with the pen I stole from you. I want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I want you all to myself. I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Alistair. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? again we're at this fucking part again yay it's everyone's favorite everyone loves this part everyone loves this part so much everybody loves this part it's everybody's favorite everybody loves it there we spend the entire weekend here with Yuri. She actually hit the heart's veils around her. I don't think she would die that quickly. Uh, her organs. Yeah, true. Well, I mean, like, it's on, it's in the left side, so that, that is, like, kind of right in her heart, isn't it? It's pretty close. Well, she would have to, like, puncture the bone, but, like, well, we know she keeps really sharp knives around. All right, it's festival time. Oh, you got here before me? Ugh. Natsuki runs away. 
Not there. Oh, okay. I'm here. Alistair, did something happen? Natsuki just ran past me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Wait, were you here the entire weekend, Alistair? Oh, jeez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. It must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. I'm almost done. I just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts the foil from his tray and takes a cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I really had to just have one. I really just had to have one, since it's the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I really shouldn't be making you wait around any longer. Just bear with me, okay? It should only take a second. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are! Hi again, Alistair. Um, to the literature club. Of course, we already know each other because we're in the same class last year, and, um... <laughs> you know, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Alistair. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know that I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That's what I've been trying to tell you all along. Man. If only you paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? Well, anyway. Not that that's out of the way. I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri? Well, I kind of started to mess with her. I guess it drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible. For some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true, I made a few mistakes here and there, so I'm not very good at making changes to the game. No matter what I did, I just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you, and amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you to spend it. it. Just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Alistair? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture, every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Alistair. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Alistair. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. And the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, Alistair. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. There must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realized that you have to have you have the same perspective as I do. And it's all just some game, and I knew that you would get over it. So with that being said, Alistair, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You're truly the light in my world. There's nothing else in this game for me. You're here to make me smile. You make me smile like this every day from now on. Alistair, will you go out with me? I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Alistair. Funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't think... T I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending, Alistair. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And 
you wouldn't believe how easy it is to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. Kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? It's all Monica. It's all Monica. Hi again, Alistair. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy, I'd love to see what you wrote. Aw, Alistair. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Happy End. Pen in hand I find my strength, the courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With the flick of her pen the lost finds her way, in a world of infinite choices behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. Did you enjoy it? I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to part... It would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that every... like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. You even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now I don't need to hide anything anymore. We're ready to spend our eternity together, Alistair. So many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Um, hi everyone. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. Do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording without any warning? <laughs> I remember this. I remember this from the last one too. I'm sure some people don't mind, but I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. Let's see. You want to see a trick? I, can, I can't really do much except for a couple things. Are you ready? I'm just kidding. I can't do anything after all. Give me some time to prepare. <laughs> I'm gonna get distracted, I'm sorry. That was your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as, long as it's with you. But anyway, it takes me some time to collect my thoughts and I'm sorry. I always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. Escape. 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 Delete. Escape. Delete. Escape. Escape. Escape button ain't doing nothing. in saving anymore. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Log in. Oh! This is the fake desktop. Oh, there's... Oh, this is so cool. Wait a minute. Oh, this is cool. Wait a minute. This is new. Oh, uh, we've got all these poems and stuff. Oh, hey, there's concept art. It's like the word horror during the poem game. Oh, bro, this is cool. Look at this shit. That's so neat. I can set the wallpaper too. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. That's cool. There's a little eye just in the corner there. Natsuki shoveling candy into her mouth. Uh, Sayori just picking out her favorite cookie or 
chocolate bar. It's got a cookie on it, though. <gasps> the side stories. Uh, side stories are stories of friendship that are unrelated to the events of the main game. To get all six side stories by writing poems for different characters and viewing their special scenes in DDLC. Oh, cool. This is the new content. This is what I was fucking waiting for, man. Finally, we get to the new content. Oh, new music too. Oh, shit. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is the PC version. I guess even the PC version has the uh, little built-in desktop thing. Okay, everyone. Literature Club is starting. So I'll have a seat and take attendance, okay? Ugh. I miss debate club. Who knew it could be so difficult to start a new club? Yeah, this is, uh, this is DDLC+. Plus. This is the, uh... Actually, hang on. Music is a... Why did the music jump back up? My settings, like, jumped way back up. I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Yeah, this is the, uh, the new one. It's, uh... I think it's, like, $14 right now? Uh... Uh, I think it's already on Switch. I think it's already been released. Monica is the only member of the Literature Club. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. Headline is, do you like literature? I mean, nobody is into literature enough to pick it over other club interests. I just can't rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision. What kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. But before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet, and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. Yeah, it released uh, earlier this week, I think. I want to say on Tuesday. Um, hello? Suddenly a voice causes Monica to snap awake. I swear, the music is like... Jumping up, like, every time. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I never do this. <laughs> is this the napping club? Uh, no, this is... Monica Pauls is suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is, in fact, the literature club. This is the literature club. Yay! I thought I got it wrong for a sec. Super sorry, it was so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize, I do that all the time. Oh. Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. It's just you. It means I get to be vice president. Wait, vice president? Um, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. Maybe I should be president. <laughs> now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori. Okay, Sayori. Sayori. Uh, I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening not to be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do, too. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. I was just joking about vice president thing, too. That would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry it's like this. I'm sorry this isn't, like, a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members, at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You've been doing something amazing, and you should be proud of it, you know? This may help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica. That's such a cool name. Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. You're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the flyer at her desk and realizes that her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit club members. I can do that. Cool. I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. 
you know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need, I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Siri suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug and let's go. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sarah whispers loudly, Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy? Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to think really hard about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. The day passes, and time comes for the literature club, Monica and Sayori, to reconvene. As president, Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive at the club room. She finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been ten minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining? No, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry, I'm late. I'm here. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sayori spins around over to Monica and deposits the sheet into Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Take my hand. Take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can lend to you. If you trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Sayori? Of course. Wait, wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper. Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet, I'm so embarrassed. Monica flips over the paper, written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now, do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good as at it as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a week after I write it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something like that. Aw. You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. Huh. You know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems we write and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people usually. But you can when it's a poem, right? Yeah. I think that's helping me form a more cohesive vision of the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too. I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone read that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh, jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorm together? My brain stormed so hard. It was like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. <laughs> Sayori, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. I was hungry. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, let me think about this. I mean, when will we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club. If we said they were, f if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers, I'm like kind of worried that would bring in the wrong kinds of people. You know, wrong kinds. People would come just for the cupcakes and then leave. Aw, nobody would do that. That would be mean. But you know, I want to find people who are really into literature, if they don't know it yet. Let's see. The next thing on the list. What for people reading books? I don't think I get it. Like going around the school and finding people who are reading books. You know. Like in the morning or during lunch, we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is, like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How do we know if they're just reading for fun? Um, well, we could ask them. But then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part. I'm sorry. Ah, Shai is back with the milkshake, and we have started one of the side stories. It, it turns out the, uh, the, the PC version has the in-game desktop as well. Hey, kid, you like reading books? I got a book you can read. It's called the Holy Bible. Uh, you really need it. You, you fucking, like, sinner. <laughs> uh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them up on the wall. I 
definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful. <laughs> I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What else? What would we tell people when handing them out? I don't want to just be like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if we told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? Vision for the club. Okay, Sayori, pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who's getting a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Hey, I am not a heathen. I'm extraordinarily say so, all right? Very wholesome, very good boy. I've never been lewd in my entire life. And you can't, you can't prove that I'm not because you can't see that my thighs have jiggle physics from here, okay? Okay? I'm a good boy. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Hmm. Probably like, literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Okay, what if I said that we like do group reading and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. You need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh, this sucks. Why is this so hard? <laughs> yes, Shia, spend the points. Make it happen, all right? Go, go on, go do it. <laughs> King of Thieves. I, look, okay, I... Come on, it's not like stealing is against like the Ten Commandments or something. I don't know what you're on about. Damn it. Shit, I really thought I had her that time. Fuck. <laughs> the hora hora. Yeah, Shy, you missed that. <laughs> Kitsumani redeemed the very first hora hora. Monica. Don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about in the... Kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you can't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to, to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like, intimate. Yeah. How do we get that across to people? You could be like, express your true self. Be, in <laughs> be intimate with us! Sayori, what the fuck did I just say about being say-so? Okay, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all my things in my classroom. I must have gotten too excited and rushed here, silly me. Rushed? But weren't... Ah, never mind. Do you want to go get your stuff then? I'll forget... I'll forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> I'll wait for you then. Alright, it'll only take a second. Sayori dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Oh, that's lame. Monica! Uh, you startled me. Sorry, it's just something important. On the way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? A Turian recruiter. Wait, are you sure she's not doing, she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um, well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flies and stands up from her desk. Then the two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. This way. You don't have to run. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom and lowers her voice to a whisper. See in here. Monica peers through the window. Fair enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president. I would probably scare her away. Uh, okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath and timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why, what happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom and she didn't even look up from her book. I kind of just left the flyer on her desk and walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? 
two head back to the classroom, Sayori feeling rather accomplished, and Monica still feeling a bit embarrassed by the encounter. Upon returning, Monica and Sayori resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics, from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list, and with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end in a better spot from where they began. Well, I would say today was pretty productive, pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we're starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Sayori peers at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club. Right the way into your heart. That's so cute! <laughs> I thought it was a little overdramatic, but... Sayori pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What? What do you mean? Like, I don't know, I feel like I can tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but if you call yourself a perfectionist... Yeah, yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go, and it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. I think in the end it helps me try my hardest at everything, so I don't think it's that bad. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it exactly how we want, make it into exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of it deviating from that. The vision. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think, then shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Siri taps her finger against the sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I, th I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course. But I'm here to help you. Monica returns Sayori's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sayori nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air conditioner. And the only movement is the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sayori breaks the moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me. You're the president. <laughs> in that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too. Sayori beams and grabs her things. You can go on ahead. I need a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait. That's all right. I just wanted some alone time. Hmm. In that case... Sayori waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck! Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori spins her way out of the club room. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a mo minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decides it was something she probably needed right about now. Club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something that I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that, because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be... perfect. Hmm? Monica suddenly notices a folder on the floor by her desk. Sayori leave this behind. It doesn't have her homework in it. Worry, mo worried, Monica opens the folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Become the flower. Feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they, just, as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me. All for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, 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 every day. Pluck, 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 so pretty in my hair. Pluck, 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 you're going to die, and you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, pressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what end? I look in every direction, in the field I stand in, the prosperous field, the barren wasteland, the fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy. And that is why... I've decided I must become the flower. Oh, Christ. Sayori? Yeah, that's, um... Yeah, that's that whole thing about her feeling uh, guilty and uh, selfish, isn't it? Yeah, damn. Uh, let's 
let's see. Let's see. Oh, this is a different one. Uh, acquisition procedure. Acquire all of Sayori's other poems. There was once a ladybug. It was so small, it took a really long time to crawl from here to there. It was very tiring to fly for too long. Nobody squishes ladybugs because they're cute. Does that make them better than other bugs? Do ladybugs know they're cute? I think they're too preoccupied, preoccupied with bug things. And so the ladybug crawled around and did bug things. The story wasn't really going anywhere. But I know you don't mind. I hope you think it's nice for being there anyway. Like ladybugs. Like this ladybug. The one who clings like a doof to your sleeve because it knows you won't squash it. If it doesn't bug you, will you stay a while? Oh. Jesus. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> in Act 1, try both Sayori and Monica for weekend help before choosing Natsuki or Yuri. So there's a lot to unlock here, actually. Dang. And there's a lot of, like, little secrets to uncover. Unusual poem by Yuri, yeah. Is the, is the, is the weird poem in here. No, the weird poem isn't here. The the one that's like blood stained isn't here. <laughs> one of eleven special poems. DLC randomly, DLC selects three random special poems to appear when it is started for the first time. Hmm. So those are the secrets. Six, seven, nine, ten. Wait a minute, what? One of the eleven special poems. There's only ten slots. Huh? What? All right. Uh, oh, this is one of Monica's. Okay. An electrical signal from some remote corner of my brain, connecting all kinds of circuits and nerves and chemicals in a web understood by nobody. The chemicals make my chest tingle around my beating heart. Nerves make my hand move, staining a dead tree with some dark substance. The ink reflects light into your glimmering eyes. Holding this paper is almost as though you are holding my hand which wrote it. Let our emotions stir together until our hearts beat in harmony. Connected to each other, I feel electric. Hmm, okay. So... It's 8.15. I'm very hungry. I've been streaming for almost five hours now. Um, there's obviously, like, a lot left here. Um, there's six side stories. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, there's a lot to unlock here. This is gonna take- this is gonna be multiple streams. God damn. Um, so yeah. Uh, we will come back to that, um, another time. Uh, oh, right, yeah, I gotta, I gotta shift myself up here now, since, uh, I, I moved myself, uh, yeah. Okay, so, anyhow, um, five hours and didn't even finish it off. Yeah, I didn't even get to, like, the actual ending of it. Like, there's a f bunch of side stories to do. Like, ah, God. Um. So yeah, stay tuned for the thrilling conclusion, um, next Saturday, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like this isn't, like, a, a primetime game, and I want, like, Saturday and Sunday to kind of be primetime games. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll scratch into it a little bit more, like, Monday or Tuesday? Probably Monday. Monday I might be able to start a little bit earlier, even, actually. I don't know. I'll come back to it. Uh... I, I did, like, just kind of want to revisit it since, you know, it's been, like, God, four? Four years since I've played it last? So, you know, it's it's been, like, a really long time. Um, let me see. I'm gonna send you over to... Oh! Okay, this time I really am gonna send you over to Koki. Because, um... Koki is playing Frog Fractions. 
We all love frog fractions, right? Where is Koki? Uh, and I mentioned before, Koki's very cool because uh, they went through the same guild that uh, I went through to uh, get their model rigged. And she's super cute, and she's a punk, and... Fuck. Fuck, I said the C word. Shit. Okay, don't... Don't tell her. Don't tell her I said that, okay? She'll, she'll, she'll fucking, like... She'll fucking tie bricks to my feet and throw me in the ocean. Uh... Yeah, the, the C word, cute. Uh, legitimately, in Koki's chat... Uh, the word cute will get you bopped by the auto mod. So, <laughs> so don't use the word cute in her chat. She's, she's got a reputation to uphold, you see. She's a delinquent. She's a punk. Uh, she, she ain't cute. <laughs> she, you're seriously just not allowed to say the word cute. Because the auto mod will, like, bop you. It's, it's honestly kind of funny. Anyway, thank y'all for stopping by. Hope you had a good time, and, uh... We'll get back to this uh, another time. So, uh, see ya next time for Subnautica. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's Subnautica. Come for Subnautica. Subnautica's fun. Okay, bye!